Hi everyone, I'm excited to share today. I didn't know if this was something that I would be able to share this week because this is a total experiment. The, this, everything that I'm sharing today is an experiment. I had this idea a week ago. Um, I'm working with a builder on my doTERRA team and she's getting ready to build her website and she was really frustrated with the branding process. She started going through my course, but she was still a little bit stuck and I was like, ooh, so how about I go through the process of helping to brand her, but share it live on Friday. So this was like, I think last Wednesday I had this idea and I was like, that means that I am going to have to brand someone. My Monday was already booked up. We had a, an appointment with my son. There's lots of people on live right now. We had an appointment with my son at the doctor. So Monday was out. Wednesday was out because I was doing some mentoring. So that left Tuesday and Thursday to get a complete brand done for someone with the expectation that I was going to share it with all of you on Friday. And I was like, that's a lot of pressure, but I got it done. And I want to share, I shared the results on my, um, in my feed on Instagram and, and on my Facebook post, uh, yesterday. And I shared with you the final results. And so I thought it would be really interesting to walk you all through this branding process with this woman, this wonderful woman that I know and how she was so overwhelmed by the process and she did half of the work and I did half of the work and we put it together and we've created this. So if you're new here, my name is Ashley Sorokis. I'm a registered holistic nutritionist. I'm a doTERRA diamond essential oil educator. And this is why I'm teaching you this today. I'm a branding and website expert specifically supporting wellness entrepreneurs and health business owners. So I'm known for being super transparent, super strategic. My goal for all of you, morning Don, is to teach systems with soul. So we cover some logistics and systems and strategy, but what the idea is is to open up your calendar for the time and the work that you really love doing, your zone of genius work, the stuff that lights you up. And you'll be able to tell today, this branding work is what lights me up. There are some projects that I work on where I am exhausted by the end. And like, I feel this is where I talked about a few weeks ago, this creation process almost felt equally creative of me making something, but destroying me in the process. Um, when I work on branding, it is mutually creative. I feel so fired up after working on stuff like this. And this is why I have a course teaching all of you because until I went through a branding process four years ago and hired it out and paid a really expensive designer, I didn't know what this process was. I literally just thought that when people came up with websites and logos, they just pulled the colors out of thin air. They were just like, well, I like blue. Oh, I like pink. And they just like picked random colors. And it turns out that there's actually a process that you can follow. It's really easy. It uses free software and it's not hard to do at all. And so I thought, this week I would follow my own process. What a concept. I've gone through it several times for my own stuff, but I would do it with someone else and I would actually show all of you behind the scenes. So that's what I'm excited to talk about today. So the first thing about branding is you need to know who you're talking to, who you're trying to help. Because I give this example in my course is, let's say that you wanna work with people with anxiety. And I, I suffer from anxiety. I'm very um, aware of the pitfalls and how I feel when I'm anxious. I feel like I don't want any more stimulation. I need to feel very calm. I need to feel very um, soothed. And so let's say you are someone who wants to work with, some, with people with anxiety. You wanna support people like that. Do you think that you should pick a website and pick colors for your business that are really like, let's say bright red and really saturated colors? In my mind, as someone with anxiety, if I were to go to a website and we've seen those websites before, they're maybe like 10 years old. Maybe it's like a vampire website and it's like black and red and it's all like blood. And if me feeling anxious were to go to a website like that, I would be like, no, no, no. So if you are someone who is selling and wanting to help someone specific with specific issues, you need to make sure, it doesn't mean that you can only pick specific colors to go with that. It means that your overall feeling from your brand and what we're gonna talk about today needs to support the ultimate result that you wanna work with people. Good morning! Uh, there's people from my mastermind in here. So my lovely mastermind, I have this other group that I, that I am a part of, of all these really high level, wonderful people. Um, and one of them's on right now. Um, so 
And she specializes in branding too. So this makes me feel really, really uh, nervous. So the first step in the process that I went through with Laura is she needed to get very clear on who she wanted to help. There are exercises in my course that we go through and we go through these questions and documents and you actually define who it is that you're helping. So Laura is really interesting and this might apply to your businesses in that she almost has two separate parts of her business. It's actually very similar to mine. I have a doTERRA wellness business and then I have, and she has a whole, oh, thank you. My lives have been so good. I've been trying my best. Um, I don't always, can't always show up. I've been trying to make sure my anxiety is really good this week so I can show up for all of you this week and last. Um, so Laura's other part of her business is that she is a former HR executive. So Laura has 14 years experience working in the HR world. She was a very high level leader at a large company in local to where she was. And she left that job to a do her doTERRA business on my team, which made me want to throw up for her. Um, because that just, it felt very pressure filled for me, even though it totally didn't need to. But the second thing was that she um, she wanted to do HR consulting for businesses that like really light her up. And for her, that those are female run businesses, usually just single women, solopreneurs running it, and who are at the point where they're maybe making about $100,000 a year, but they need to start hiring help. And Laura is the one who helped me hire my two assistants last month. She is amazing. Anyone who's watching this that thinks that they need an assistant, please go follow at laura.born.wellness. You're going to see her name um, in a minute when I show the logo. Um, go see her and her website will be up soon. So this is exciting. Oh, yay. My sister's getting started health and wellness and oils and I'm going to send her your way. I would absolutely love that. Thank you. Um, have her follow me. I'll share all the stuff. So, um, so she, so Laura has that side of her business, but she also has this oil side. So she actually completed two different ideal clients. So interestingly enough, I'm going to focus on the health side, but everything I had to consider when I was creating her colors and picking her fonts also had to apply to this other type of woman that might be coming to her website as well to look at more of the HR consulting side. So keep that in mind. If you are someone watching this and you think you feel, or you feel like you have two separate parts of your business that are like two separate people, at the core of it, they usually are not that different. At the core of it, we can usually choose colors and fonts and, and design kind of assets that will, you know, attract both people. So that's what I had to keep in mind in the back of my mind. But we're going to talk about Laura's ideal client first for the oils and the health side. So Laura's ideal client is her from two years ago. So a lot of you who get into the health and wellness business, you start doing it because you do what we call turn your mess into your message. That is absolutely what Laura has done is she has taken her, um, she was working at an amazing job. Yeah, it can be tricky if you have two audiences, but um, you just have to look at the things that overlap between the two and know that rarely are they like, like rarely are you talking to like, let's say millennial women over here and then like 60 year old men over here. Like there's usually some overlap in terms of the gender, in terms of maybe the income level, in terms of the feeling that you're going for. So the first thing that we had Laura do is, is define this oil customer, health customer. And for her two years ago, she was making an amazing income. She had all the, not all the money in the world, but she was making like a good income. We're talking a hundred thousand dollars plus. So she was, you know, investing in a lot of health stuff and could afford to do that. But what she was really struggling with was that she had no time. So she could afford, so this ideal client that she wrote out, this story of this woman trying a personal trainer before, but never being able to find the time to actually go to the gym, of wanting to go to yoga classes at the end of the night, but this lady has two, two children that are very busy. And after her really, really busy, high level, high functioning um, executive job that she goes to all day, she then comes home and mom's all night, right? And so she always has this ideal client of Laura's, always has these intentions of going to yoga class after the kids are in bed. And then she gets the kids in bed and she's like, oh my God, I, I need to like go veg in front of the, uh, in front of the TV and just watch Netflix because I can't even, you know, function. I can't even think 
straight right now. I'm going to bring up a few of the other things that she's brought in here. So she said, I, and I asked questions like, what does she do on a Sunday? What does he or she do on a Monday? So on a Sunday, she doesn't have any time for herself. She's running around. She's doing the groceries. It's not a day of rest to her. Sarah, uh, Laura said about her ideal client, it seems like the busiest day of the week is what Sunday feels like. And then every Monday, she signs up for something related to her wellness and then loses all of that track by the end of the week because she has really good intentions of starting the week off really, really strong and then falls off track as work and home life takes over. So some of the other questions that I asked her are things like, what does she do for, what exactly does she do for work? And Laura, um, and I put, what are her qualifications and school experience? And Laura actually named, like she went to undergrad at this university and then she went to teacher's college at this university. And this woman that Laura is talking to is a principal of an elementary school. So she wrote down what are, and these are, we're going really deep on this work because you need to know, and this is going to, uh, influence what you write on your about page, what you write on your sales pages, all of those things. So when Laura is writing copy in the future, she's going to look at this ideal client and she's going to use some of these sentences that she wrote down when she described her ideal client. So some of the things that we, we work on in the course um, is a section called Dear Diary. And this is written from your ideal client's perspective. And she said, his or her pain points that she would only admit in a secret diary. And the first thing that Laura put that her ideal client would think is that being a mother is harder than she ever imagined. How many of us can relate to that? How many of us feel like this? Who, all of you who are mothers out there feel like this on an everyday basis. She wrote down that she just wishes that she had time for her to take care of herself. That she imagines a whole weekend where the family went away and she could, I'm reading around my phone, that she could just do whatever she wants. Like how many of you wish that? Like, can I just go on a vac? Like, can't my family just go? I will pay for them to go somewhere else so that I can just have a freaking moment to myself, right? Allison, look, Allison, would you, if you read some of this on a website, would you not be like, yes, 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 you are Laura's ideal client. Now, if you weren't already, you know, <laughs> if you weren't already doing doTERRA, you know, all that, Lynn says yes as well. Like these are universal things that we all think about on a daily basis. This is who Laura's ideal client is. She wishes she had more time for her husband. She worries that being a working mom outside the home isn't good for her kids as she is always exhausted at night. Um, all, things that she put in her, in her diary. All of her friends thinks that she has it all together, but no one realizes that she is barely hanging on by a thread. How many of you can relate to that, right? Like this is who Laura's ideal client is. And this is how deep we go in the course. This is before we look at colors and fonts and all of these different things, because you need to know what your ideal client is thinking so that when they come to your website, you have three seconds to get their attention. They need to see, they need to be able to read one sentence that catches their attention and they need to be able to feel that they are in the right place. And that does not ex happen consciously. That happens subconsciously. And that is through the fonts and the colors and the visual branding that you choose, which is what we're going to get to by the end of this live stream. Um, some of the other things, um, her resolutions, I will not work myself into the ground this year. I will ask for help. I will hire the right people. I will prioritize my own mental health and self-care. So these are the people, but, and this is why we go through this is because on the last page of this exercise is the obstacles because you and I are all looking at this and anyone who's watching this, who uses essential oils, which is what we're writing this ideal client in this, um, kind of, uh, relation to Laura's ideal client is the obstacles are going to come up. So Laura wants to work with this woman. If, if any of you who do a doTERRA business or essential oil business, you read that ideal client and you're like, does this woman need fricking essential oils? absolutely a thousand percent. But what are the obstacles that are going to come up in Laura's place um, right in front of her that this woman is going to tell her as excuses for not, you know, jumping on board and not becoming a paying client of Laura, which in this case is um, becoming a, a doTERRA essential oil customer. So the first excuse, I don't have time to go to an essential oil class. I have so much to do. Second excuse, there are just, ha there are just hard years with the kids once winter is over slash summer starts slash summer is over slash they are older, I will have more time, right? It's always like, I will have more time when, and we all know 
No one's ever going to have more time. Um, the third one, green cleaning doesn't actually work. This is obviously one of the obstacles Laura has heard before. Four, I've tried vitamins before. I never noticed a difference. Number five, this is just another fad. I don't believe it will really work. I have tried oils from Sage and I don't think they actually did anything. So these are the obstacles that when Laura starts creating the content for her website, she's going to start writing helpful articles that help women get over these excuses. And her sales pages are going to have writing on it that help people get over these excuses because absolutely these are like super, super common obstacles that come up. So this is who we are branding Laura's business for. So when I go into the visual branding that I'm gonna actually show you on my computer screen in a second of this whole process that I went through, you're keeping this in mind. This woman, and Laura actually named her Sarah. So we are keeping Sarah in mind who is 42, a female who is 42. She has completed her MBA. She has an income of $185,000. She's an elementary school teacher, sorry, principal. And she's married with two kids, one boy and one girl. Like we write it down, like Laura has a image of Sarah in her mind while we're doing this visual branding. Okay, so knowing all of that, the next thing that I have my people do in my course, everyone who's a student, before we get into visual branding is to pick five words or three to five what we call brand words or brand feelings that we want your customers to feel when they visit your website, your, your future customers or your current customers. And so Laura sent me a lot of words and I was like, you have to narrow it down to three to five words. And so her words that she wants her ideal client to feel is empowered, resilient, effervescent, which I think is such a lovely word and not used enough, expansive and supported. So that is how knowing the ideal client that she has defined that she wants to work with now. And Allison's on that lesson now. Allison just joined my course like three days ago or two days ago. And she's already at this lesson, which I believe is in module one. Um, so this is like the base foundation is defining who you're working with and what you want them to feel because your visual branding will be inspired by who you want to work with and how you want them to feel. Okay. So again, her words are empowered, resilient, effervescent, expansive, and supported. A lot of E words there. So now that we have those things defined, now we get to go into the visual branding. Okay. So I'm going to pardon me while I move all this stuff around. So you on Instagram, you're going to see a whole lot of stuff. Just get, I need to actually physically move my phone and oh God. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it around. You are going to see Hey, hey, and everyone on Facebook is now going to have this ugly ass back of my phone in here, but we're going to bring up the next stages. Okay, so let me move you forward a bit so you can see more. Okay, so then we go into module two of my course. This is where we actually get into the visual branding. So the first thing that we do is we create a private Pinterest board. So Pinterest is a free software that you can use, free social media essentially. Um, and so I have everyone go into Pinterest and just start pinning images that make them feel the way they want their business to feel. So keeping in mind those brand words that Laura chose. Um, oh, sorry, I gotta share my screen. I gotta share my screen on Facebook so that everyone can actually see what I'm talking about. Okay, share the screen on Facebook have it going on Instagram. So you go through and you create a private board. Now I asked my students to pin 30 to 50 pins for this first round. Laura pinned 157. <laughs> Laura's an overachiever. So she went through and she pinned all of these things that it's her perception of how she feels when she sees these images and that matches up with how she wants her ideal clients to feel. So another person might have those same five brand words and come up with totally different images because this is where you get to exert your taste and your preferences on your brand. Okay, so she went through and she did this and she picked all of these beautiful pins. Now there are actual brand boards on there. But she picked these beautiful pins and we're, and like, this is a lot, right? So again, I only asked for 30 to 50. She did a lot. So the second thing I had her do was to whittle that huge board with 160 pins down to it. And I asked her to actually pin 12 to 15. She pinned 35. <laughs> Laura likes to do double what everyone else does. Um, so what she did here is, and I'm going to have everyone um, kind of ignore these. These are other people's brand boards, essentially. 
we were not, I'm not in the business of copying what someone else has already created. We were looking at these of, she wanted to share this hot pink and this teal as inspiration for her brand. Because when she originally sent me these pictures, so take this brand board out, take this brand board out. These are the pictures that she sent me. So you can see that these pictures were very kind of washed out, very muted. She was kind of working through this idea that her ideal client wanted to feel calm. And it's funny because she pinned all this and I started um, creating a, a mood board for her. And a mood board is simply a collection of images that you feel represents your brand. And we just put, these are nine, 10, 11 images. And we put her brand words at the bottom. And I started taking my favorite images from that edited board and I just plopped them. This is um, a Canva template. I just dropped them into this template and I started rearranging them just in a way that I liked to see them as. So I sent this mood board over to her and you can see that I've, and I'll explain in a minute how I picked these colors on the right, but I picked some of these colors and I sent this over to her and she was like, eh, like, I don't love it. And she's like, but am I supposed to feel, am I supposed to have a reaction? I'm like, yes, you are supposed to have like a visceral reaction when you make your mood board that is gonna then influence the rest of your branding decisions. You should be like, oh my God, I love that. And she was like, meh, it's okay. And I was like, okay, well then this is not, you know, why do you feel like this isn't okay? And she said, I really, really love, and she dresses in like bright colors. And she was like, I don't really feel like it's bright. I don't feel like it's colorful enough. And I asked her why she didn't pin more colorful images. And she said, I kind of felt like I should pick calm images. And I said, but Laura, your brand words are empowered, resilient, effervescent, expansive, and supportive. None of those words say calm. None of those words are, you know, need to be all white pictures. And she was like, you know what? You're true. That's true. So what I did is I went and she had a, a document, um, a photo shoot done and I pulled a couple of those images and I went back to this edited brand board and I picked out some different images that I then placed in. So I came out with this second version of this brand board. So you can see the slight change in the images here. So this is actually a picture from Laura's photo shoot. And you can see that she wears this bright and she has this bright teal coat. And like, this is what she's known for is dressing in these bright colors, but none of any of these pictures in here had any bright colors. And she was saying, well, I want a bright teal. And I'm like, but nothing in here is bright teal, except for maybe a little peep of this wave crashing over here. So we switched out um, her actual own picture and I included a picture of a boat. This is the wake of a boat as it's driving through the water because I know Laura, her, they, she loves boating. They have their, her and her husband own a boat. Um, her, their whole family, like she has two boys, they go on the boat, they spend a lot of time on the water. That's part of their life. And so I switched it out for this picture here. And so I pulled some of the different colors here, which again, I'll explain in a minute when we get to the final version, how I chose the colors, but we changed out these blues and there still wasn't, other than like really going with this bright blue, like I still felt like choosing this bright blue was not jiving with the rest. Like I just, just did not feel like it was cohesive brand board yet. And she looked at it and she said, again, like meh, meh, like it's okay. But like, I have no feeling either way, no strong feeling. And I was like, okay, hey, that's not okay. So what I did is knowing Laura, and this is what you might have to go through when you go through this process yourself, is it might take you a few tries to go through and figure out, does that feel right? And is this the brand board that I absolutely love? So when I looked at her big board, I was seeing pictures with more color. I was seeing like this image right here that I'm like, oh my God, beautiful with all these beautiful succulents. And Laura loves these bright colors. And I went down here and she pinned these like very abstract pieces of art and really colorful things. And there's her teal and there's her pink in there. And so I went through and there's an image at the very bottom of, I saw this very at the very beginning and I was like, oh God, where is it? I saw this picture of this abstract piece of art and I was, and I know Laura. And so when you're doing this, you're actually doing this for yourself when you're a student of my course. And so obviously you know yourself and you know what art you like and what your house is decorated in. But I looked at that image and I said, that would be a piece that Laura would actually have in her house. Like I could see that in Laura's house. So I then pulled some of these other images 
that I felt that represented Laura. Because again, remember, her ideal client for her health and oil side of her business is her from two years ago. So anything that she would like, in theory, her ideal client would like. So I went through here and I came up with this version. So you can see that I kept this quote here. I really liked this pink color. Um, and Laura, in her photo shoot, she's wearing a really light pink sweater in a lot of the photos. So I thought that that would look really nice. I know that she doesn't hate pink. I pulled a different picture from her photo shoot, again, of her wearing this teal coat. But I brought in a picture of the ocean because for her, I know that the ocean is so cleansing and it's, it's this juxtaposition between this amazing power and ability to destroy things, but also this really calming, life-giving, supporting entity. Um, this picture I pulled, I just felt like that was her in an image. And I pulled this picture of this path and this boardwalk. She had a picture of a kitchen that she didn't include. And I loved including this picture because um, I've been in her house. I know that this is actually very similar to how her kitchen feels. Um, so I started pulling, but she also loves nature. So I brought in kind of these forest pictures and some of these abstract art pictures that provided a little bit more option for some different colors. But I felt like because she explained herself as colorful, I wanted to bring in some colorful pictures here. So I sent that over to her. And this is Laura not knowing anything about the design process. And her, from the first two more mood boards, let's remember, the first two mood boards, she was like, meh, like, am I supposed to have a reaction? And I'm like, yes, you're supposed to have a reaction. So I send over this third one to her and she replies back and we're doing this on Voxer. So it's like a walkie talkie software. And she replied back and was like, oh my God, I freaking love it. There may have been a swear word in there, but she was like, I love it. Oh my God. Like, I didn't know what you were talking about where you said there would be an actual reaction. I just had a reaction and I love this so much. So I was like, yes, that's what I was waiting for. So once I had the okay on the pictures of these inspiration pictures of how she interpreted how she wanted these five brand words to feel, which these brand words are what she wants her ideal clients to feel when they come to her website. I then worked on picking these colors. So the way that I picked these colors is there is an ability to use an eyedropper and you just roll over these pictures and you pull the colors from the actual pictures. This teal color is taken directly from this wave, right? Actually, this teal color might either be, I can't remember if I pulled it from this wave here or if I pulled it from this image right here of these um, kind of paint splotches on here. This purple, or the, sorry, this pink is taken directly, I kind of went between this purpley color up here with this orchid and this pink color right here. I kind of went halfway between the two. This pink right here is literally this color right here. The green, I went into the forest here and actually I went down this picture down here and I pulled from these um, vines that were growing up. I thought this was the most beautiful picture here. And the light green, I actually pulled from this seaside, this, this kind of gray grouping, this gray green grouping of, um, plants up here on the edge of this path going to the sea that's growing in the sand. This is where I pulled the colors from. This navy color, I pulled directly from this area of this wave picture right here. And the light gray, um, Laura did not want pink and gray. She's like, everyone has a freaking pink and gray website right now. I do not want pink and gray. So, but then I looked and I told her, I said, but look at your pictures. There is so much gray in all of these pictures. There's gray as a background here. There's gray here, gray here gray here and she's and gray on the sidewalk and she's like you know what you're right so the gray that I chose for her is actually more of a purpley gray it, it kind of more matches this color right down here in the background of this picture so I picked those colors and she was like they feel amazing and then what she said to me is she said I have a picture funnily enough I went to winners one day and I found this picture that I um, bought and her husband asked her like do you really need another piece of art and she was like no but this picture spoke to me and I then switched out her mood board because it was very similar to this picture that she had already pinned. Guys, this is like art coming to life. She had pinned this picture already at the beginning of this whole session. So this one right here, she had pinned this as one of her first choices of her inspiration board. And then a few weeks later went and found, not knowingly, she didn't remember that she had pinned an image like this. And so I took that out and I said, well, let's switch and let's look and see what your mood board will look like with that in it. And to be honest, the mustard and the brown color was just throwing me off. It didn't feel right. It didn't feel balanced. And I sent it to Laura 
to get, you know, I switched some of the pictures around and I sent it to Lauren. She was like, no, 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 I don't, I don't like it. So we just settled on that number three was the right mood board for her. And these colors were the right colors for her. It was the blend of the bright pink um, and the bright teal, but I gave her options of light colors for each version um, because you can't just have all saturated colors on your website. Imagine a website with just all bright pink, bright green, bright blue, navy, like you need some lighter options as well. So that's what we ended up with on her mood board. So then we moved on to fonts and I asked her, um, is there anything that you have seen as a logo that you absolutely love? And we brought up and she said, I absolutely love Jenna Kutcher's logo. So I don't know if you can see it here, especially on Instagram. I'm going to bring it up. So this is Jenna Kutcher is a really, you know, big online business owner. She's got like hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram and she liked this logo. And I asked her and I said, but why do you like this logo? Can you explain it? And she said, I like the combination of this kind of handwritten font with this really, really um, like almost masculine last name. She said, I really like how strong my last name sounds. And I want that to be in like just a very plain block letters. But then I want my first name to feel very feminine and very um, flowy. And I was like, okay, that's a really good place to start. So then I went on my absolute favorite website. So I'm just gonna make this smaller again. Creative Market. Creative Market, if you haven't been on Creative Market, is where you can buy different things to make your brand. And it's really, really cool. Um, I This is like a, people who don't know about Creative Market, and I introduce them to you in my course, um, people die. Like you could spend the rest of your life looking around the beautiful stuff that's on Creative Market. So I went into fonts, and I went into script fonts. And I just started looking through. So what you do is you can... Um, change the view. There's a little um, right here. You can change this view where it's going to list them as single uh, fonts and you can change what you want written. So we knew that we wanted her first name to be written in this font. So I wanted to, and you can just change it out. And I put in Laura and I actually put in the capital L Laura. And this way, as we go through the fonts, I started picking fonts that I thought looked very similar to the Gen the feel to the Jenna Kutcher one, because that's the one that she liked. So I started go going through and you can create what are called collections. So I started saving all of these fonts that I thought Laura might like, and I wanted to get her opinion on them in these collections. So you can see that I pinned about, oh God, what is that? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, there's 18 uh, ones there that I tried out. And then there's another, so probably about 30, 40 pins. Uh, so 30, 30 or 40 fonts. And I started going through and looking at what her name would look like in each of these fonts. So we go in here and I considered for a while, I considered this Amaro. Um, and what I did is I would go into Creative Market. Again, Laura is already in here as a preview. And I just took a little screenshot of this little piece where it was showing what it would actually look like when it was typed. So then I started throwing those into, I have all of these up here, guys. Uh, just one second. Okay, so then I took them and I threw six of them that I really liked. Um, I knew that she wanted a strong font here. So I started with just a really basic free Google font called Montserrat. And I typed that in and you can use Canva for this free piece of software. And I started taking these screenshots of these other ones and just layering them over top. And I sent this over to her and said, which one do you like? And I thought she would like three because that was actually super, super close to the style of Jenna Kutcher's. And she was like, you know what? I think like, I don't love any of them. I think I might like three and then six. And then she mentioned to me, I actually like more, um, I like my L's to have a loop in them, like more of like a cursive L. So I then went back and I found more fonts that were much more what I thought were traditional and that um, almost calligraphy like. And I didn't love the calligraphy kind of style of them necessarily for Laura, but I wanted to get her opinion on it. So I started pulling and now in my reference document that goes with this, I actually know what the names of these fonts are, um, like what the names are from Creative Market. So then I got her opinion on these and I said, I love number eight, but what do you love? And she said, I do like number three. I like number nine. And I think she might've said five, actually, I forget which one. I think it was three, eight and nine. 
And I said, okay, so now we had, I had a direction to go with. So then what I did is I put them all on one document, these options that she wanted, but I went in there and I also typed out, so this, this script font is what we would call an accent font. And I knew that it may show up in other places on her website or in her branding, but only a couple of sentences here and there. So it might be like really um, strong, powerful sentences or an introduction sentence. On my website, I have my accent font just with my, hey there, like I'm Ashley. So all that I did is I went into Creative Market and then I typed out, hey there, I'm, I well, can't type when my keyboard is in front of a whole bunch of things. I'm Laura. And I took that screenshot because I wanted her to get an idea. And you're going to do this yourself. I want you to get an idea of what a font is going to look like, not for just one word, but when it's actually typed out. So she then, and I loved the look of number four. I was like, oh my God, if this was my brand, I would totally be picking number four. But she was like, you know what? I love that. I like the L more on number five. I like four in the logo, but I do not like number four in how it's written. And so she's like, and she, I thought she was going to choose number three. And I was hoping she wouldn't choose number three. Cause to me, it felt very much like a wedding invitation. It felt like a very calligraphy style font. Um, and so when I wrote it out, she's like, oh no, I do not like number three. That's way too fancy. It's too formal. And I was like, absolutely. But she needed to see it written out in a full sentence. So she said, I really like the feel of number two, but I don't love the Laura as part of my logo. And I'm like, okay, great. I liked number two as well. I feel like that. Um, I know Laura and I know her handwriting and she has sometimes, depending on how fast she's writing, it's a little bit chicken scratchy. It's not the most like feminine, not feminine, but it's not the most like loopy, perfect, kind of like what this one is here. So I knew that number four wouldn't work. And so I liked number two as a balance between, so it's funny, she originally thought she wanted something like Jenna Kutcher's, which would actually be number one. But when we started looking at some of the different options, she liked number two better. And I agreed. So this is a font called Camilla Script. So then what I did is once she was totally okay with that font, because these fonts on Creative Market are purchased, you have to purchase them. Now, this one was $15 US. So super, super affordable. That's the only thing in this entire process that would have costed Laura money. Actually, it did cost Laura money because she's the one that purchased the font. I then took it and made it into a logo. So once we have decided on a font, then what I wanted to do, as you can see here, it was nine, sorry, $19 US, or sorry, that's the Amaro. So yeah, it was um, $15 US. But then what I did is I brought up all of her fonts that I thought would go together. So I chose a, and we go through all of this in my course of what is a serif font, what is a sans serif font, how to pair fonts together, how to give yourself enough options on your website to create visual interest. So her header kind of display really strong font is called Meriwether in the bold weight. So Meriwether is the name of the font. Bold is the, um, the weight of it. So there's regular weight, bold, um, lightweight. So we chose, I chose the Meriwether bold for her. Then as the secondary in the body typeface, which this is going to be the actual writing on her website, needs to be a very easy to read font that has a lot of options with the family in terms of having bold and extra bold and light. So I chose Montserrat bold and Montserrat regular as her, you know, most of the content in her website will be used in this Montserrat font. And then you can see the accent here is named Camilla and this is the light uh, version of Camilla. It's the light uh, weight of that. So I wrote out some test ones um, for her to see. There's a, there's a regular version and there's an alternate version. Um, and this is when you get into fonts. There's lots of different fun things to play with. Um, everyone who joins my course who's like, what is this font thing? They get obsessed with fonts because you realize there are so many beautiful things that people have made. Um, it's just, it's a whole world that you didn't realize even existed. And I think it's the most fun thing to play around with ever. So this is what we landed on is for her website. I've already marked out what is going to be her header one on her website, her header two, her header three, her body, which is going to be formats and her blog posts are all going to be written in monster out regular. And then her H4 accent font is going to be Camilla light, which is a custom font that I'm going to show her in the course. Um, there's a video showing you exactly how to upload your own customized font onto your website so that no one else will have what you have. And this is, this is what we landed on for her fonts. So then, um, yeah, Jennifer says, I'm so stuck on fonts. There's so many beautiful choices. Honestly, you just need to choose one that you love 
and know that you may then go check creative market three months from now and there will be one that you might love more but you just need to stick with one for a good one or two years if you decide to rebrand in two or three years you can choose a new font after that but for your um, display and for your like main website fonts I recommend going with free Google fonts. So free Google fonts, you can download them for free from Google. Um, these you can use on your website. You can use, you'll find in Google Docs, a lot of these come up as font choices. In um, Canva, these are free font choices. On Squarespace, these are all free font choices. Literally the only thing we paid for in Laura's brand over and above anything free was this Camilla Light, um, Camilla font that we chose off of Creative Market. So then it came time to building Laura's, uh, Laura's logo. So like I said, she wanted a handwritten font, a handwritten kind of first name, and then she wanted her strong bottom name. So I put these in the color, so the navy blue from her brand colors. This is what this is. It's not a black, even though it looks black on the screen. It's actually a navy blue. And I just typed out in that Camilla font, Laura, and then born, this is underneath, in her Montserrat uh, font. So I then wanted to make it look a little bit more. Now, this is what, if you were designing this yourself, this more than likely would have been the logo if Laura was doing it herself, what she would have um, stuck with. But for me, I wanted to make sure that this didn't look like a large E. I wanted to give it a little bit more femininity. So I then took it and um, imported it into the Procreate app on my iPad. And I hand drew in and I hand extended this L swoop going down, I actually slightly rotated the L and I brought up the R a little bit. Um, so you'll see the slight difference between that and that. So this is Laura's final logo. It was based off of me just literally typing out the, in the Camilla font, Laura, and typing out in the Montserrat font, Born. Laura Born. That is her logo. You absolutely can create your own logo that if I were to be paying another graphic designer for this probably would have cost like $300. Logos are so expensive and they're so easy to make yourself. So then we go on to watermarks, which watermark, it's so funny. I was, you know, Laura has so many amazing talents and graphic design is not one of them. And when I started talking to her, I started talking about assets and watermarks. And she's like, it's funny, assets to me is like my car and a watermark is what happens when I leave a cold glass on the table for too long on the surface of my table. And I had to laugh. So a watermark is what you can overlay on images that you upload to social media in order to make sure that no one steals your image. So you can put a watermark and this just gets put, placed on top of an image. You can use a watermark as a header on your stationery or any handouts that you make for people. You can put it at the footer of things. You can put it at the footer of your website. This is just Laura's initials, LB, written out in that Camilla font. I literally just typed them, LB, and there you go. That's, that's what it is. It's, it looks interesting. It looks like this abstract squiggle, but it's actually the L and the B. And I gave her a navy version and a pink version, and that's super simple. So then what we do is we put everything together on what's called, let me find it here, a style guide. So this looks super fancy, right? Um, this is not, it's not meant to be fancy, but it looks fancy. Like when Laura saw this, she was like, oh my God, I am, you know, effing legit now. Like I look like I am a legit business. And I'm like, well, you, you are a legit business, regardless of whether you had this branding or not. But this is what we did is we just put it all on a style guide, which again, this is done in my course in a drag and drop template on Canva. So this is her logo. We imported it up here. Here are her colors. And these underneath are what are called hex codes. So these are the codes that you're going to need to be able to use these colors for um, any other programs like Canva or on her website. She's going to be able to put in these colors specifically. She could change the color of her writing on her website and different backgrounds on her website. She can put in any of these colors. And that's what these hex colors are for. And then we have her typography, which are, it's just a fancy word, sounds very fancy, right? For her fonts. So here's the Meriwether, here is the Montserrat, and here's the Camilla Light. Um, Laura asked, do you, use, do you use the paid version of Canva? You don't have to. If you wanna be able to upload your own font, yes, you are gonna need the paid version. I believe it's $9 US a month for the paid version, but you absolutely could make this 
in Canva for free. If you don't want to upload your own font, if you want to use just the fonts that are already there on Canva, which they have some really good options because they're all taken from the free Google fonts, which is what her two main fonts are, you absolutely could do that as well. I am put, just put her accents, which are her watermarks here. Um, and then we just, I pulled four of my favorite pictures from her mood board and just inserted it here. And at the bottom is her lauraborn.com, which is where you're going to be able to find Laura's website by the end of the month. And Laura is building that herself using all of these assets. These are called assets, guys. Does that not make it sound super fancy? Um, so that's it. I'm just going to move this back. I'm going to turn me around again. So that's it guys, like this branding process, um, Emily says, are payment plans still available for your course? Unfortunately, no, the payment plans, and this breaks my heart when someone asks this because I just wanna give it to everyone for like the lowest price possible, but that was a bonus that everyone got for signing up by Wednesday at midnight. Now I'll let you know that you are, you can join the program at the basic version, which as of right now is $4.97 Canadian. Um, if you can't afford the deluxe version, even though you know you want it. And there are several buttons to be able to upgrade to the deluxe version of the course when you're in the course. So you can do that in a couple months from now if you want to unlock those deluxe bonuses. You can do that at a later date. And that's a way of kind of giving yourself your own little payment plan. Um, so at, at FYI, um, the payment plan, and this is how I price these out. So when I do a payment plan, I actually charge you a little bit more because there's more admin behind the scenes. Some people default on payments. So the basic version of the course on a payment plan worked out to $441 Canadian. And now at the regular price, it's $497. So you're actually only paying about $50 more, even though you don't get a payment plan. Um, if you have a credit card, then you put it on the credit card. And instead of paying me three installments, just pay your credit card three installments. So you can do that too. Um, so if there's any other questions, please ask me. I love talking about this. I am so excited for Laura to feel legit, guys. Like she now feels legit. She now feels like she has this brand that is like fancy. Like people are now, she's going to be able to charge more money for her services. Not necessarily doTERRA. Those are fixed prices, right? But if she ever gets into health coaching, which she's finishing up her schooling for that, she does HR consulting. Someone is going to go to her website versus no website, which is what she's had so far. She's had no website. Um, someone's going to go there and they're going to be like, this girl's legit. Like, of course, I'm going to pay that price that is listed on her website for these HR services or her health coaching, whatever it is that she ends up selling because she looks fucking legit. Like, sorry for my language, but like, she looked at it and she was like, this looks like something that like real businesses have. And I'm like, but you are, you are a real business. <laughs> like, why should you not have this? And she's like, but it feels like, like, this is like, I need to grow into this. And I'm like, that's what I wanted is I wanted you to be able to grow into something that two years from now, you still look at your, your logo and you still look at your colors and they're not out of style. And they're not something that you're going to need to redo all the time. Something that you're going to be able to play with on social media. And, I'm, and I teach that in the course too. Like now that you have these assets built, you have your colors chosen in your fonts. How do you put this into work with coming up with things that you can share on social media and things that you can share on Pinterest and Instagram and Facebook that when someone lands, like when someone lands on my Instagram feed, all the colors and the feeling that is on, yeah, Laura, right? Like grow into your brand. It doesn't, you should, it's almost like we talk about you being in your comfort zone and things that you do in your business sometimes have to feel one step or two steps outside of your comfort zone when you first do them. It's because you're stepping into that new version of you, right? Um, so, I mean, Laura, Laura turned 40 last year. Like she's not a 22 year old right out of college who doesn't know who she is. Like Laura is amazing and she knows who she is. And I wanted a visual representation of that. And it's funny because I asked her to send her finished style board to some of her friends and family to get their opinion. And unanimously, all of them came back and said, it feels like you, it feels like you. And that's what her website and her business is, be, is going to be is it's lauraborn.com. It's not, doTERRA essential oils.com. It's not, um, whatever else you might be selling in your business. It's not up to them to give the feeling of how you want to feel when clients and customers work with you. It's you it's, and this is where, um, Laura is a fantastic example of that. A lot of her customers are not customers of hers because she sells doTERRA essential oils. That's just what she sells them. 
but so many of them tell her, I just want to spend time with you. And that's the same thing that whether you know it or not, and whether your customers are specifically telling you or not, they just want to spend time with you. They want to experience you. And so if your stuff looks the same as everyone else's, if it's green and blue because you saw someone else's website and you just like the colors and it was green and blue, and you frankly just kind of ripped off the stuff that's on their website, you know, you, you're not giving yourself the ability to stand out from the crowd. You're not letting yourself grow into that next version of yourself. Um, so I wanted to point out, um, thanks Beth, such a great point to brand you and not the direct sales company. Guess what? The direct sales company has their own brand. They probably paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for their brand and their logo and the specific colors that they use. The company needs you to be you in order to sell their stuff. The company has their brand. You are not the company. You are you and you are selling you and people, especially if you are in something like doTERRA and maybe you feel like everyone and their sister. I hear that all the time. It's so saturated and everyone and their sister's doing doTERRA. But the difference is going to be you. There are people that are going to choose to work with you over someone else because of the way that you teach or you make them feel. You are the walking embodiment of your brand. And that's what you need to make on your website is to, you need to take you and how you feel in person and put it on your website. That's overall what I have people tell me when they come to my website, they come to my home they see me in person is they're like, you look like your website. You look like, and not that you have to be matchy matchy, but all of the things that I surround myself with, including how my website looks is an extension of what I like because I am looking to work with people like me. So that's what I do, right? Does this make sense? I hope it does. Um, if anyone wants to know, my course closes, the doors close more than likely until October, the doors close on Sunday night at midnight. If you want to join me in my brand build blog course, please click the link in my profile. If you're watching on Facebook, the link is going to be in the caption. If you want more details on the course to see the price, it starts at $4.97 Canadian. There's an option to upgrade to the deluxe version. But like I said, you can upgrade later and um, that's available within the course at any time that you want to do that. Um, so please let me know if you have any questions via DM. It was so fun to share this today. I'm actually recording the video so that I can send it to Laura and be like, FYI, this is why I created your brand the way I did because she was giving me the feedback, but she wasn't involved intimately in the process other than seeing what I was sending her. So now she knows. Um, Beth says, so grateful I got your course as it has been a game changer and took away the tech fear. That's my job. Like if you can Amazon Prime, you can build your own website. There are no excuses. If you can attach a PDF to an email, you can build your website. You just don't know how. And so my, my course is literally me. Everything that I just showed you to do, it is me doing that in the course with someone else's brand and website and we build it together in the course and you point and click alongside of me as we build it together. So there's no need to feel scared. Although I understand why you feel scared. I did too the first time. I feel scared before I go live every time. Like fear is just a part of life, right? Um, I say that facetiously now because I'm not having a bad anxiety day. <laughs> the days when my anxiety is high, fear is controlling everything. So if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I am so honored if you choose to work with me. And if not, it's okay. We'll do another round in October or whenever it might be. All right, guys. See you later. Oh God, how do I end this? Okay, bye guys. <laughs>